Greetings, my name is Stephen Feuerstein. I'm the Oracle PL SQL Advocate for PL SQL, here with a PL SQL quick tip regarding an interesting and potentially dangerous side effect of no copy in which you can end up with partially modified data. Let's take a look at some code. So, no copy and partially modified data, what am I talking about? Let's take a look. So in the package no copy test, I have a nested table of numbers. I have one procedure that passes that nested table by value. It does not include the no copy hint. And one called pass by ref that passes the list of numbers with the no copy hint. And if you're aware of the difference between passing by reference and passing by value, which means you should have watched my video on this topic already, then you'll know that when I add no copy, what that means is that Oracle will not make a local copy of this array to which all changes are applied and then copy out my local copy to my actual variable when the program is completed without exception. So it does not do that copy process. Let's see what difference that makes in terms of our data sets. So here's, here's what happens in each program. It's all the same. The only difference is the no copy hint. I'm going to go through all the elements in my array, and I'm going to double the value in the array. But if I have asked it to terminate prematurely, raise an exception, then when index is greater than two, it's going to raise an exception, it will not be handled, and the procedure will fail. Again, in both cases, the code is ex exactly the same. So when I pass by value, it's going to make a local copy of the nums array, apply the changes to the local copy, and then if and when the program terminates without exception, this value, this local copy, is applied to the actual variable that I pass in. When I pass by reference, there's no local copy made, so the changes are applied directly to that data structure. So let's see the implications of doing that when an exception is raised. Here's my test script. So I've declared two different arrays, nums1 and nums2. I've got an array, and I populate both of them, sorry, with 1 through 5. I have a procedure to show the values in the array, simply loop through all the elements and display them. And by the way, if you haven't seen this before, you've probably seen put line, not put. What I'm going to do is put them all on the same line. So I add to the buffer, and then I execute a new line procedure to force the new line. OK. In my executable section, I will call each one two different ways. First, I'm going to call pass by value, pass the array, and say, don't raise an exception. Process everything and end successfully. And then I'll display the values. Next, I'm going to pass by value, but I'm going to assign the value true for raising an exception. So we'll see what happens when I shortcut execution and terminate the procedure with an exception. Then I'll do the same thing for pass by reference, but I'll just do the raising an exception is true. The behavior will be the same. If we don't raise an exception, it'll go through to the end. So I raise an exception, terminate my pass by reference procedure prematurely. Let's see what happens. I run my script. Now, what you see is that before by value, so I pass in the array, and I do not raise an exception. I start out with 1 through 5. I end up with 2 through 10. Everything's doubled. And the same thing happens with pass by reference. Now I'll do it again. Before by value, 1 through 5, I've reset the array. After by value with raise, look at that. It's all the same, 1 through 5. Nothing's been changed because those changes were, in effect, rolled back. But when I've got no copy, I start out with 1 through 5. And then after no copy, when I raise and force premature a termination of my procedure with an unhandled exception, uh-oh, I've got partially changed data. Notice, I've got 2, 4 instead of 1, 2. I'm sorry, 2, 4, 6 instead of 1, 2, 3. And then I've got 4, 5. So the first three elements of my array were changed. The last two elements were not changed. This is a very significant side effect that you need to be aware of. And then you need to ask yourself, is this OK? Can I add no copy hint to my parameter? Have my, and then the next question is, can my procedure terminate with an exception? In other words, do I allow an exception to propagate out of my procedure unhandled and unresolved? And likely the answer will be yes, because you don't want to trap and, and suppress all those exceptions. And then the question is, in the context in which I'm using my nested tables, here, here's the context in my little script. I use it here, I use it here, et cetera, et cetera. Then the question is, after this 
this block terminates with an unhandled exception because this procedure will terminate with an unhandled exception. Will I still want to use that data structure? Will I still be depending on it for something? And if the answer is yes, and you have to do that, then you should not use no copy. If the answer is yes, but maybe you shouldn't do that, you should say, wow, I found a bug in my code. I want to use no copy. And my procedure terminated with an exception for some reason I don't know what it was at the time I'm writing my code. Therefore, hmm, I probably really shouldn't trust that data structure. And so probably if you if you add the no copy hint to your subprogram and you find that you are relying on the data structure after the exception is raised, chances are the solution is not to say, oh, oh, better not use no copy. Chances are what you should have learned is that I was making a mistake in my code. I was utilizing this data structure after the procedure terminated when I shouldn't have because something went wrong and I don't know what it was. So that's the situation you run in with no copy. It's a side effect of passing by reference. You're making the change to the actual variable passed in, not a local copy. And the results could be a partially modified data structure. And the argument should be that that's OK, because you're in an exception handler now. Your procedure failed. And you're going to deal with that exceptional circumstance. You're not going to keep on going and saying, oh, well, that's OK. We'll keep using these data structures anyway. And, um, Hope for the best. So use no copy. You can get significant performance benefits, at least under fairly extreme circumstances of very large data structures with large values like long strings in an array of 10,000 elements. So you can definitely see some benefit. But you need to be aware of the side effect, and you need to make sure that your code is consistent with something went wrong in my subprogram. Therefore, I need to stop and not assume that things are OK. Thanks for joining me. Hope you learned an interesting quick tip about PLSQL and happy PLSQL coding. Okay, time for some takeaways from this video. First of all, remember, no copy changes the parameter passing from by value, a copy, to by reference, a no copy. What that means is that any changes made in the program are immediately applied to the actual variable passed in, not to a local copy. So if the subprogram fails, with an unhandled exception, the PLSQL engine will not roll back the changes made. You can have a partially modified variable in a state that you cannot trust. So make sure that when you're working with a procedure that has no copy parameters, that when you handle an exception from the failure of that program, you do not make a potentially incorrect assumption about the state of your data. Some resources to, to complement this video. Check on my baseline passing by reference and value video. Check out using no copy to improve performance of your programs and also how you can use compile time warnings to help you apply no copy in your code. If you'd like to reproduce exactly what I showed you in this video, download my demo zip file from Oracle Learning Library, oracle.com slash OLL slash PLSQL and check out the no copy bad data file. Thanks very much for joining me and happy PL SQL coding.